everyone. Um, we'll go ahead and get started now. My name is Cynthia Clevenger, and I'm excited to welcome you to today's webinar, highlighting DataZoo's new Report Builder feature, which will be available in the DataZoo UI starting in early Q4. I work on the Product Marketing and Industry Solutions team at DataZoo, and I'm joined today by Denise Hoda on our product team. In this session, we're going to be walking you through a preview of the upcoming feature, followed by a Q&A session. We're scheduled for one hour to include time for a live demo on the platform. Um, if you're unable to uh, attend the full hour, we will be sending out a recording after the call. Before we get started, I have a few housekeeping items. You'll be in listen-only mode to cut down on background noise. The webinar control panel can be opened and closed by clicking on the red arrow button in the upper, upper right-hand corner of your screen. If you have any questions during the webinar, you can send them to us by opening up the control panel and typing them in the question box. Just regarding questions, if you do have questions that are specific to your clients and or existing campaigns, um, please reach out to your account manager following this webinar and we'll be sure that we address any of those specifics. Today's webinar, I mentioned, is also being recorded, and we will send you an email with a link to the recording in the next day or so. And with that, a brief introduction about our speaker, Denise Hoda. Denise is an Associate Product Manager for DataZoo's Measurement, Analytics, and Creative Suite products. Most recently, she's been focused on the rollout of DataZoo's Report Builder to help streamline reporting for all of our users. She's also working on our Dynamic Creative Optimization Solution, and building out support for HTML5 in our ad server. Before I hand this over to Denise, um, I want to go through a few of the details at high level um, and a brief overview of what our enhanced reporting features and functionalities will bring to the table. In an effort to continually provide our customers with the most updated tools they need to maximize data, impact strategy, and increase campaign performance, we're excited to introduce to you Report Builder, a modern reporting interface that we think can positively impact the way in which you look at your campaign data. So coming soon in early Q4, DataZoo's reporting interface will be updated to include enhanced visualization, features, and functionality. Links for existing reports will now be redirected to Report Builder. The reason we created Report Builder was to provide our customers with the ability to visualize reports in the format that they want whenever they want it. And we do think that you'll find a number of key benefits as part of this updated reporting interface, including better visuals, more customization, and time-saving collaboration. So with that, I'm going to hand this over to Denise, who's going to walk you through the agenda um, and some of the details. Great, hey, thanks, Cynthia. Yeah. Um, sorry, let me just grab the slides. All right, sorry about that. Um, okay, so hi everyone, I'm Denise and I'll be taking you all through the DataZoo Report Builder. So to kick things off, I'm just going to go over some of the features that will be available. We'll also go over the data, um, go a quick overview of the DataZoo dashboards and then we'll spend a chunk of the time in the actual uh, demo of the tool. So just to kick things off, I want to highlight a couple of the features that will be available for you with our new Report Builder tool. So one of the main features of our tool is an improvement of how we can visualize our data. So with this new tool, we can start to move away from Excel workbooks and pivot tables and start to view our data right in the UI in different chart formats, pie, graph, bar graph, stacked, um, line graph. We're also able to customize that data to fit your reporting needs by creating custom reports and dashboards that include data that's... So in addition to that, you can also download the data how you want it. So if you are more comfortable in Excel, that's still an option, but we're giving you a bit more flexibility in terms of seeing that data either in Excel or PDF or image format. 
And then lastly, with this tool, you can more easily share your learnings and reportings with your colleagues and clients um, by setting up specific and detailed subscriptions. So you can now schedule exactly when you would like your report delivered to you, but also how you would like it delivered. So again, whether that's in a link to the UI or a PDF format or a specific chart type, um, it's extremely flexible for you to share. In terms of our data overview, we've loaded data from September 2014 through present day. So additional data is going to be loaded in, his, in later phases, but for now we only have the data from September 2014 through today. The data is updated multiple times throughout the day, so this is a little bit different from our current system in that you will start to see data trickle through throughout the day in the new report builder tool. We also have timestamps on each dashboard that will notify you when the data was last refreshed so you can know exactly how recent the data you're looking at is. One slight change that we've made to how we're storing the data is that we've stored creative and exchange level data in separate data structures. So what this means is the upside is that we're able to get you that data much quicker, especially exchange data, which I know can take, um, take a little long through the custom query. However, the implication is that since they're stored in separate data structures, we're no longer able to pull a report that includes both exchange and creative out of this tool. So based on our, our research, this doesn't seem to be a huge concern, but if it is, definitely let us know. Um, you know, you can pull a report by exchange, you can pull a report by creative, but you can't pull a report that includes both fields. In terms of the available data, here I've listed some of the key metrics and dimensions that are available to you. This is by no means the extent of it. Um, we do have a full list available, but I wanted to highlight some of the key ones that we have. In addition to this, something really exciting that I wanted to mention is that DataZoo Report Builder allows you to ingest third-party ad server from DCM into the tool. So if we have any clients out there that are using DCM as their ad server, I know that it's a pain point to have to merge multiple data sources together to get your full report. Um, with Report Builder, we are able to programmatically and automatically ingest DCM data into this tool, and you won't you will no longer need to manually merge those data sources into one report. The DataZoo dashboards are a set of canned reports that we've created based on feedback that we've gotten from clients on what the most common reports are that people are pulling. So the idea is that you can use these to gather information and data on a daily basis. Um, you know, if there's anything that falls outside of what, the, what these dashboards cover, you can feel free to create your own unique dashboard, but the idea of these dashboards was that these would hopefully solve some of your most common questions that you're asking when you're doing reporting. And with that, I'm going to jump into the demo so we can spend a bit of time um, actually in the tool. So as you can see here, we have a couple tabs at the top, uh, Dashboards, Reports, Manage, and Search. So I'll first start with the Dashboards tab. Here you'll notice a little drop-down menu, and here's where all of our dashboards that we've created live. So we've created six for you. Um, they've organized into various different umbrellas. What we tried to do is basically separate it out into more summary type reports and those will be more of the reports that you can use in wrap-up decks and reports that you can send to your clients on how your campaigns are delivering and how your campaigns are performing. On the other end of things, the other umbrella is diagnostics type reports and those are more to do with reports that will help you optimize and try troubleshoot your campaign. So they're reports that are going to be looking a little bit deeper into the data rather than a high level view of how your performance and delivery is doing. So I'll start off with the account summary dashboard and here you'll notice that we have several different tabs. We have an advertiser overview, campaign, um, campaign week over week, and creative overview. Up here on the top is the data timestamp that I was refer referencing before. So this is telling me when the data was last loaded through. On the, le on the right here, you have what currency the current data is, is targeted in. 
Down here we have our various filters that you're able to select and apply to the different dashboards. So the nice thing about this is that we have these canned reports and the idea is that you're able to select different filters to see those same exact reports for different advertisers, campaigns, flights, dates, anything, anything that the filter allows you to do. So if I wanted to change, you know, if I wanted to instead of looking at the past year of data, maybe I want to look at the past 90 days, I can apply that filter and it will update the data with the same charts and same information but now showing me for the last 90 days. And you can do that with any of the filters that are listed here. Another interesting and nice piece of this tool is that it's super interactive so you'll notice different points of the graph, it's showing me more data points that I can look into. So it's showing me the exact CPM and exact spend for this particular month. You'll also notice that my pointer will turn from a pointer to a little hand. That indicates that there's an area that you're able to actually click into. So here I'm able to click into the month of September 2015 and what about, that'll do is populate a new report with the same data, spend versus CPM, except that now it's going to be broken down by date for the month of September. You'll also notice that as I hover over the different points of this dashboard, there's a little arrow that pop, pops up. I can actually click on that arrow to download that specific chart, and I can download it in various formats. I can download it as an image, if you want to maybe stick that into a slideshow presentation. I can download it, I can download the actual data behind it in Excel format if you're more comfortable playing around with that data. And really any chart that shows up on these dashboards you should be able to download that data for. So again, I could download it as you know, the actual raw data if I want to play around with it in, in Excel instead. And how that shows up is just a simple image format that you can then uh, ship off into an email or into a PowerPoint to send to your clients or colleagues. So again, there's, there, you know, we've created these, these canned dashboards to help you kind of see a high-level summary of your campaigns, how they're doing, how they're performing, and hopefully the idea is that you would be able to use these on a weekly basis or daily basis to send off to your clients to show them how your, how your campaign is doing. And there wouldn't be any need for like a data dump to upload or to up, um, update the data. So a couple other, other tabs that we have, of, um, the diagnostics tab, again, like I said, this is more looking at a deeper level to really analyze your campaign and figure out what's going on. Um, you can use these to you know, see which exchanges are performing well, which exchanges are not spending much, if there might be an issue with a certain exchange. Um, we have several different reports, flight analysis, creative analysis, Video analysis, which shows you the drop-off between um, impressions video starts and completion. So you can see how well your campaign video, your video campaigns are performing in terms of video completion rates. Device analysis, so this is, this is great for mobile campaigns um, where you want to see uh, how your mobile campaigns are distributed across different platforms, carriers, and devices. I know that mobile tends to be a, a channel where it's difficult to get a lot of insight because we don't have a lot of third-party data there. Um, so this is a nice way to provide a kind of a deeper analysis of what exactly is going on when, with your mobile campaigns. A time analysis uh, dashboard, this is meant to show you how your campaign is performing day over day and, and hour over hour so you can start to look at where you, should, where you need to start optimizing and maybe increasing spend on um, you know, particular days of the week. So for this campaign, looks like you know, I'm seeing a lot of actions for Tuesday. That would indicate that you know, maybe I want to start spending more money on Tuesdays. We also have a couple other, um, you know, for, for any, any campaigns that are using DCM data, we have third-party account diagnostics and third-party account summary dashboards. Um, we have a click-optimized account summary, so that's for campaigns that maybe aren't using any actions. And then pacing has been a huge one, a huge help for people to see. This is basically a report that shows you how your campaigns are 
pacing against your set budget and has been really helpful in allowing our users to uh, optimize their budgets and optimize their campaigns to make sure that we reach those budgets by the end of, of the campaign end date. So another nice feature you'll notice up here, it says unsaved view. Um, one other nice feature of this is that I know a lot of times how people work with, with campaigns is that they might have a set of campaigns that they're in charge of or a set of campaigns that they care about or a set of flights that they care about. Um, what you can do instead of having to come in here and reselecting all of the filters, you can leverage this saved view feature where you're essentially uh, selecting a certain, so let's say you wanted to look at the um, month of August of this year. You could type in that date apply that filter, and then up here you could save that view and say August 2015 campaigns. And what that does is saves that view up here, and now every time you come in here, that filter will be available to you. So you can pretty much do that on any, any, of, these, um, any of these filters. So if you wanted to select all of your retargeting filters, and then over time you'll have a long list of your different views, and that way every time you come in here, you don't have to reselect all of the campaigns that are applicable to you um, since you've already saved that view. You can also export, export this dashboard into a PDF format, and that'll download this entire dashboard just into a PDF, and you can then send that over to a client or a colleague. So that's really our canned dashboards that we've created. We're hoping that these are really helpful for you know, everyday items that people are doing with reporting. Um, however, knowing that each client is different and each client has different reporting needs, there's also the option to just create your own dashboard. So you can do that in two ways. Um, if you, you know, like the look and feel of the dashboards that we've created, but maybe you want to tweak a couple things, you can create a copy by saving as, and it'll create a copy of this dashboard, which you can then, you know, delete certain things or add certain reports. However, if you wanted to actually start from scratch and just create your own dashboard, you can select add dashboard, and it'll create a blank screen for you that you can start from scratch. So I can come in here, you know, label my dashboard, um, label my tab, so maybe I want to call this campaign performance. In terms of style, um, I can add certain things like a headline, so I can say campaign performance reports and move that around. I can add different lines, so this is more of a stylistic thing to break up your dashboard. Uh, I could add a line here. Um, I can actually add web content, so this could be something as small as a logo, so you can do a Google image search and just find a logo for a particular brand and then just get the URL for that logo and stick it in here. Uh, the only thing is that it needs to be a secure site, so maybe I want to put in the DataZoo website. I can also do any website, or I've seen some people do like a Twitter feed. Um, you can add that, and that's more just like a, a stylistic branding thing if you wanted to add that to kind of brand your dashboard to a particular client. I can add that. Um, I can also come here and add some filters. So date is usually one that's usually included. You can select that and then you can come here and it'll ask you to select a default date range. So I'll just do last week's and add that. I can add different filter attributes. So that could be, you know, something like campaign. Uh, maybe I want to add channel. And then you can come in here and there are sometimes some uh, settings that you would want to fill in for your filters. So it'll ask you how many values can be selected. So if you want it to only be able to select one, one, one campaign at a time, 
You can also set a parent filter. So what that means is, for example, if I selected mobile as my channel, I would want it to filter down to the campaign filter and only show me campaigns that are mobile campaigns. So I can add a parent filter and say that my parent filter will be channel and that'll now uh, inherit whatever filter is in channel. And then I can also add some reports. So let's add a day of week report. Performance by day of week. Um, and I can adjust the size of that as well. And then once I have that, I can adjust some of the settings by clicking on the settings tab. Here's where you can add your drilling. So uh, previously when I showed um, the dashboards, you could drill into the month of September and it would show a report that showed the same data by date. So here's where you would add that same sort of functionality. And I think drilling is a nice way to kind of make these dashboards a bit more interactive and make it uh, a bit more of an experience rather than just reports. You're using this dashboard to kind of create this user flow that's easy for users to come in and see their data and then click around and without having to, you know, create a new report or go to another tab, go to another report uh, dashboard. So you can come in here and add a drilling. It's going to ask you when I click on, so that could be any of these metrics if you want that to be the trigger, or it could be the attribute. So I'm going to select the attribute as my trigger. So it's going to say when I click on day of week, and then I'll specify what I want it to show me. So that could be different attributes, um, breaking out that same data by different attributes, or it could be uh, a specific report. So I think I'm going to do our impressions by hour of day. So the idea is that whenever I click on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, um, Sunday, it'll show me a report that shows impressions by hour. So I apply that drilling and then now um, when I am able to now click on one of the days of the week and it'll pop up a report that shows me impression volume by hour. So again, kind of creating a nice flow in that someone might come in here and say, oh wow, it looks like a Sunday, um, the spend is really low. I wonder why. They can click in onto Sunday and see even further detail to see exactly what hour of the day is causing that. Another nice interactive piece that we can add is adding text that can link to other places. So here I'm, I've added a little description text that I can say, you know, maybe they see this report and they want to know a bit more information about pacing. So for more information on pacing, please click. And then I'll just go ahead and get the URL for the pacing tab. Copy that. And then here I can actually select the text and link it to another dashboard. And so again, you're creating that nice user workflow where someone can come in here and, and we can guide them through other parts of the dashboards and other, part, other tabs. Um, in other dashboards as well. So that's pretty much it on the, um, the creating your own dashboard. There's a lot to do here. Um, there's a lot more features, a lot more things that you can customize. But uh, so I imagine that, you know, once you actually get into the tool, you have a lot more questions. Um, so I can go ahead and if, once I save that dashboard, it'll now show up in my list of dashboards down here. Right now, it's selected that only I can hear it, I can see it.
so those are the dashboards. Um, again, the idea is that you can kind of create these, spend a lot of spend some, spend some time up front to really create these dashboards that tailor exactly to you and your client. And then moving forward, um, each time you need a new report or for a new campaign, it's that much easier to generate because you've already done all of the work up front in terms of creating the reports that are relevant to, to your campaigns. So if there are reports that are not covered in your dashboards or not covered in, in what we've created, you can create your own reports by going to the Reports tab. And here's where you can start to create your own reports. So here we've had, we have a ton of reports that we've created. Um, you're also able to uh, organize them into different folders. So instead of having to download these reports and save them on your computer, you can now just have them all here for you and just refer and come back into this tool to, to get them. So I'm going to go ahead and create a report. And it's organized a little differently in that it's going to ask me, you know, what metric am I, at, am I looking at? So that's your what. So it's going to say, um, I'm going to pick impressions, select impressions. How is basically asking, how do you want to break out that data? So what dimension do you want to break it out by? So maybe I'll select day of week. And it'll populate that report for me in a table format, but I can also change it to a line graph or a bar chart or a pie chart. Um, it's extremely flexible in that sense. You can also add various filters. So, um, you know, I tend to save most of the filtering for on the actual dashboard where you would, you know, leave this report open and then the filters would be applied on the actual dashboard. But if there's a specific um, campaign or channel that you want to see uh, on, for this particular report, you can do that here. So maybe I want, I want to see display channel. You can also add filters, ranking filters, so that's going to be something like show me the top 10 campaigns by CPA. You can do numeric range filter, so that's going to be something like show me all the campaigns where the campaign budget is greater than $10. And you can do things like, you know, maybe you want to see a report where it shows you a list of the campaigns where the CPA is under a specific goal that you have. So you can get kind of creative with the filters to really hone in on a specific report that you're looking at. Over here is where we can start to configure and format the report. So that can be something as simple as setting the colors. So here I can change the color of if maybe your your um, you your your company has a cer certain color scheme, you can change that here. Um, another common thing that we see is I'm just going to add click through rate to my graph to show this. So if I add click through rate, you'll notice that since it's on the same axis, it's not showing up. So uh, adding a secondary axis is another thing we can do here. We can also start to really uh, change up the different chart types. So if I want one to be a line chart, and you can add data labels as well. So you can start to get really uh, specific with the formatting and how you want that to be formatted. And if you come up, you know, the nice thing about this is also that if I spend some time configuring the graph to exactly how I want it to look. I can then come in here and so I'll save this report as day of week performance by display campaigns for, for display. Save that report. And then I can use the same report, just change the channel uh, it's to say, instead of online, show me mobile. And it will populate that same report, but instead of showing me by display, it will now show me a mobile campaign. So I'll just let that load, and while we're letting that load, I'll show you the Manage tab. And here's where you can start to set your subscriptions um, and email yourself dashboards and reports. 
So I would go to email dashboards, schedule a new email, and I'll just send this to myself, and it can be, you know, weekly performance reports. And, you know, you can include a message. And then over here is where you would start to select the specific dashboards and reports that you want to be sent. So I can choose to send myself that dashboard that I just created. Now, all of the dashboards will be sent in PDF format, and all of the filters carry through. So whatever filter that you had last on your dashboards, that will be the one that carries through on the PDF. So I conclude the, the dashboard, but maybe I also want to include some supplementary reports and data on, to include. So I can, maybe on that dashboard, I want to be able to show the performance by day of week data um, in line. So, and then you can choose the format that you want that report to be sent in. So it could be an inline message. So that's just going to show up in the actual email body. Maybe you also want to provide some supplementary data in Excel format behind that. And then over here is where you would schedule that report. So you can choose to do that daily. You can choose to do it weekly, monthly, yearly. And then the nice thing is that you're really able to specify when you want it to be sent during the week. So if you owe your client or your account manager or someone a report every Monday morning, you can decide to select Monday. And you can even select a specific time that you want that sent. And what that does is, uh, Basically, you're able to now specify exactly how and when you're, you want to send these reports to your clients and to your colleagues. And then I would just save that emailing subscription and that'll start sending to me um, uh, on a weekly basis every week on Mondays. And then back to this report, so I've now selected mobile. What I can do here is save as and instead of display. It's, it's going to show me from mobile. I can save as. And now I have those two reports with the same formatting. So um, you can really, you don't have to spend, you know, time each time for each report redoing all of the formatting. You can just adjust some of the metrics and dimensions and keep same formatting for those. So I think that was about it on the demo, on the tool. I mean, there's a lot more here that you can do, but, uh, you know, I think it's really a matter of just getting into the tool and playing around and figuring out um, uh, what's useful for you. Thanks, Denise. Um, as mentioned, if you guys do have questions, please submit them in the question box located on the control panel. Um, Denise, a few questions came through uh, during during your demo, and I can start with those. But again, if you have additional questions, um, please feel free to submit them now and or follow up with your dedicated data zoo account representative. Um, Denise, one of the questions that came in uh, was around the old or uh, the existing reporting. So, um, can I still use the custom query reporting tab within the data zoo platform, or will this tab be retired? Sorry, Denise, not sure if I can hear you. Oops, sorry, I was on mute. Um, no yeah, so you, are, you will still have access to the custom query tab. There actually are a couple dimensions that are not supported in Report Builder, so you'll still have access to that old tool for, the, for, for those dimensions. Great, thanks. Another question that came through, um, is there a restriction to how many custom dashboards can be created by a user? So right now, there's not any restriction on how many custom dashboards um, you want to create. So one of the key features of Report Builder is that it enables customers to create these custom dashboards. So we want you to be able to take full advantage of that. Um, we purposely built the feature as, uh, this way because we know that our customers, such as agencies, you're managing multiple advertiser campaigns, and uh, those generally require different types of reports in your dashboards. Great. Uh, another question that came through, I've worked at an agency that has multiple traders accessing the data zoo platform. Will we be granted only one login to Report Builder, or will each user be able to receive their own unique login? 
So right now the access to this report builder is um, mirroring whatever access is in the data ZUI. So if you have a user that has access to our current data ZUI reporting, they'll also have access to the report builder. Great, and a final question that came through is, when should I use the existing dashboards versus creating a custom dashboard? Yeah, so like I mentioned, um, creating we created these dashboards as a way, you know, f based on feedback from our customers, and it was a way to kind of try to capture some of the reporting that is common across our users. So if you're able to use those dashboards, great. If they if they are answering your questions, you know, that's great. Um, however, if there are specific questions that they aren't answering, definitely feel free to create your own either by creating a copy of the dashboards and maybe just adjusting a couple things or starting from scratch as I showed in the demo. It's really up to you and up to what your client is asking for in terms of reporting. And if our dashboards aren't answering your questions, definitely feel free to create your own. Uh, we're always looking for feedback on them. Um, oftentimes there's something, if, if your client's asking for it, it's likely that other clients are asking for it. And if that's the case, we can definitely add them to our canned dashboards. Great, thanks Denise. Um, well, for all the attendees, thank you again for joining today. We hope this preview was useful, um, and we're really excited to get your feedback once you have a chance to start using Report Builder. In the coming weeks, we'll be keeping you updated as to the specific date that you'll have access to Report Builder and the data through UI. Um, but in the meantime, please don't hesitate to read out, reach out to customer support or your account manager with any needs or questions. As mentioned, we will be sending out the recording um, over the next few days following this call, and we appreciate your participation.